Now, in Rome, just like there are four pastas, there's also two famous artichoke recipes that Romans treasure every year when spring rolls around. The first is carciofe alla Giudia, or Jewish style artichokes, which we made last spring. Deep fried to a golden crispy perfection, they're simply heaven. Then there's carciofe alla Romana, or Roman style artichokes. It's more of a braised style artichoke that may not sound as fun on paper, but in my opinion, it's just as special and it's just as delicious and that's what we're making today. So let's just jump right into it. Now before we get into prepping the artichokes, which I like to do last minute because they can oxidize and brown, we need to prepare the seasoning to this dish, which besides frying, what makes it kind of distinct from the Jewish style artichokes. Now there is an herb that is classic to this dish that is predominantly found in Italy and Rome called Mentuccia Romana, which is basically an herb that tastes like mint and oregano. It's impossible to find in America. I've never seen it, but we can approximate it with, you guessed it, some mint and oregano. So first we need about two tablespoons of fresh mint and fresh oregano. For the oregano, just like thyme, just sort of pull it right off of its stem. Once you've gone through and you got roughly about one to two tablespoons of the oregano pulled, we're gonna pick off a bunch of leaves of fresh mint. And then just like a chiffonade of basil, we're gonna stack the leaves on top of one another and then we're gonna roll it onto itself and then we're gonna slice it very thin. And I'm cutting the mint separately because the mint is delicate and it can bruise very easily. So I'm just gonna give it I once through with the knife and leave it in these little strips. Now I've got the oregano and I've also got about a quarter cup of parsley as well. I'm gonna bunch up the parsley real tight and then give it a once through with the knife and then we're gonna take the oregano. We're gonna place the oregano on top and then we're gonna continue to chop the oregano into the parsley until both of them are a nice fine chop. And then we can add that to the mint, mix it all together and then just reserve about a tablespoon or so of that herb mixture for garnish at the end. Next up I've got three cloves of garlic. With a microplane, I'm gonna grate them straight in. And then follow that up with the zest of one lime. I'm gonna give this a cut in half now while the knife's out. I'm gonna use this to prevent my artichokes from oxidizing as I'm cutting them. Back to this. So now we've got the herbs, the garlic, and the lemon zest. I'm going to add salt and olive oil to it. Maybe just a few pinches of salt and enough olive oil to loosen it all up to allow it to kind of stick to the artichokes. This is called a tournée knife or a bird's beak knife. This is the best knife to use to prepare artichokes. The sharp curved side allows the knife to sort of curl along the curvature of an artichoke. And it's a small blade and it's gonna just sit in your hand like that and it's gonna be really hard to hurt yourself. It's a good knife to have. This is a Victoria Knox. It's cheap as hell on Amazon. First thing I'm gonna start to do is just pick out the outer leaves. We're picking off the outer leaves because these are inedible. In fact, there's a lot that's inedible on an artichoke. And you're probably gonna see a lot of waste right now. This is simply the life of an artichoke. You could probably make a broth out of these leaves, save them for a vegetable broth, freeze them, but don't worry too much. It's not so much what's on the outside of this thing. Everything that's good about an artichoke lives on the inside. These are tough, these are inedible. And what we wanna do is make our way into this lighter area. This is still a little rough. The only thing edible out of this piece is right here. That's essentially the piece that meets the heart, which is the best part of the artichoke. Now I can start to feel it soften, and that's what I want, because I'm gonna cut it right about here and discard the top parts of all of this, which is basically an edible. And it almost gives you a line where you're gonna wanna cut, because all that's edible is right here. Now, since we took the leaves off, now what we're gonna do is you see this core and then this fiber on the outside, we need to remove the fiber and maintain that core which is delicious and edible. So I'm gonna take the knife, kind of match it where the core meets that fiber and just start coming back, cutting very slowly. And then when I start to get near this curve, I can just curve the blade up and clean up any of that stuff. And this is where that knife really comes into play, allowing you to sort of work around the curves of the artichoke, cleaning up any of the green on that stem. If you see a little bit of that green fiber, still just try and remove it with the knife. And once you've trimmed it all up, douse it in the lemon juice and cut the artichoke along that line that sort of reveals itself to remove the top part of the leaves. Get it doused in lemon juice again to prevent the oxidation. And then with a spoon, we're gonna start to dig out the choke that's sitting right on top of the heart. So you're gonna dig a spoon into the center of the 
artichoke, choke up on the spoon and start to dig and scoop out any of those hairs that are stuck in the center of the artichoke. The artichokes in Rome don't have the choke, but the globe artichokes here do. You may need to run it underwater because those hairs might get stuck in there and you really want none of them present in the crevices of the artichoke. And once it's nice and clean, douse it again with lemon juice and then you can set it off to the side. And then we can go through, clean up the rest of the artichokes and then move on to the next step. Now what we do is we take our herb mixture, try and open this guy up, and then we're just gonna stuff it. Try and get it in those little layers if you can, all around the outside. Now before we go any further, I need to talk to you about gut health. And to celebrate spring and digestive health month, I'm partnering with Seed to share in-season foods that are good for your gut. And as you know, we're cooking with artichokes today, which are low in fat, but rich in fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And at the end of the day, your inputs, such as the food you eat and the probiotics you take, have a direct correlation to your outputs. You know what I mean, your number twos. That's why it's important to eat foods that are nourishing to your gut, but I also like to pair that with a scientifically validated symbiotic. And the symbiotic that I trust is Seed's DS1 Daily Symbiotic. DS1 was formulated with 24 clinically and scientifically studied broad spectrum strains to support systematic health for whole body benefits beyond the gut. And most probiotics can't survive the journey through the body to the colon and they die before they get there, which is why most probiotics are ineffective. You must have a prebiotic and a probiotic, which is what makes DS1 by Seed so special. DS1 by Seed has a two-in-one nested Viacap capsule system. The outer capsule is the prebiotic that shields the probiotic from our GI tract and safeguarding its viability through digestion, delivering on average 100% of the probiotic starting dose to your colon. And thanks to Seed's spring seeding event, for a limited time only, you can get 40% off your first month's supply of DS1 Daily Symbiotic when you use my link down in the description. So head on down to the link, get your 40% off, and let's jump back into the recipe. Now we've got our artichokes marinated. We're gonna throw in whatever we have left into the mixture just to add some flavor. Flavor. Our lemons, I'm gonna add about an, a cup to a cup and a half, depending on how I feel, and then a little bit of wine. If you don't have wine, you can just add water. I've got wine. Use it if you got it, you know? Get a tall pot with a lid on medium high heat on the stove, but ideally one with not too much extra space, depending on how many artichokes you're cooking. Cover the bottom of the pan with olive oil, and once hot, add the artichokes to the pan with the stems facing up. You can cut them if they don't fit. Then consolidate all the herbs and garlic, and then after a minute or so, deglaze with about a cup of white wine. Let that reduce for a minute or two, and then add the lemons that you used during the artichoke cleaning, and then the rest of that herb-garlic mixture, along with about one, one half cups of cold water. Season that with salt, bring it up to a strong simmer, cover it and allow it to cook and steam for about 30 to 40 minutes. So now while that cooks, I got a last minute idea. You see, I got some ramps here left over. It is springtime, I saw some ramps and I got them. I need to use them. And the one thing this dish lacks is a little bit of texture. And it also happens to be the thing that reminds me most of the stuffed artichokes with lots of Italian seasoned breadcrumbs stuffed in each leaf that my mom would make all the time as a child, which is one of the early recipes on this channel. So in the spirit of that, I'm gonna take some panko breadcrumbs and I'm gonna make some ramp breadcrumbs with them. Sprinkle those on top for a little texture. Not only will it be texture, but anything that gets into the broth will also thicken it and just sort of make a nice sauce. So first what I'm gonna do is remove the leaves from any of the stemmy or root end. And then remove any of the root ends. Chop the bulbs from the stems. And then we're just gonna make a few slices one way on the bulbs, turn them 90 degrees, and then make another few slices, almost like we would cut an onion. And then we're just gonna give it a nice fine dice. Kind of just the same size and texture of a breadcrumb. Do that to all the bulbs, and then we can take the stems and just slice those into a really small dice. Then we're gonna take the leaves, we're gonna stack them on top of each other, just so they're nice and flat, and then we're gonna cut them in half, and then we're just gonna cut those halves into little strips, and then we're gonna turn those strips and cut those into a really fine dice. It's almost just gonna replace the dried basil or oregano in a normal seasoned breadcrumb. Now we can throw this together. 
And we're just gonna move the artichokes over to the side and we can start to work on the breadcrumbs. We're just gonna take a small pan, get it on about medium high heat, and then cover the bottom of that pan with some olive oil. Once it's hot, we're gonna add the bulbs and the stems of the ramps. We're gonna hit them with some salt and allow them to get nicely sauteed. And once we see them beginning to brown, then we can add in the ramp leaves. We can cook the leaves for a minute or two, get those seasoned, and once they begin to turn a nice deeper, darker green, they're on their way to getting a little crisped up, and then that's when we can start to add in the breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna add about a handful or handful and a half of breadcrumbs to the pan. I'm gonna hit them with some salt and then start to stir them all together with a spatula and allow the breadcrumbs to soak up all that oil. And once it's soaked up the oil, we wanna keep it moving. And then once they're crispy, all the breadcrumbs are nicely golden browned and the ramps are giving up this amazing, almost caramelized onion scent. Then they're ready to go. We can get them out of the pan, let them dry on a plate lined with some paper towels. Now the artichokes have been cooking and steaming for about 40 minutes. I'm gonna use a cake tester to just ensure that they are extremely tender in the stems, in the heart, in the leaves. Once they're very tender, then we're ready to plate. We can get them into a nice kind of shallow bowl. Then we can take that broth and we can spoon that broth all over the artichokes. You kinda of wanna create a nice little puddle at the bottom of the plate just to keep things nice and moist. And then on top of that, we're gonna go in with the ramp breadcrumbs all over the place. Remember, a little bit in that broth is gonna help thicken it a little bit and then on top of the breadcrumbs just finish with some of those fresh herbs that we reserved in the beginning of the recipe and there you have one of rome's greatest gifts carciofe alla romana roman style artichokes and some people might say hey it's steamed artichokes it might not look very good but trust me this tastes a thousand times better than it looks it's tender it's lemony little crispy crunches from the breadcrumbs it's a nice balance of the herbs and you should just be able to use a fork and eat the whole thing Sometimes you might get one that's a little too chewy. Maybe you didn't trim off a little bit. That's fine, it's all good. This leaves a little chewy. Scrape out all the good bits. Spring requires that you give this a shot. Recipe's gonna be down in the description. That's all that I've got today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Go feed yourself.